house really. Uh, it was built um, in the Middle Ages around the 15th century um, and it controlled across the water of course it controlled the um, ships coming into this part of the county um, and the, they would uh, demand a tide or a tax of any of the ships coming in. And the McCarthys were the main uh, Gaelic family in this area. Um, they would have uh, held most of the land. South Kerry was never conquered by the Normans or the English in the medieval period and it wasn't really until the 17th century that it becomes part of the English controlled part of Ireland. Um, there's a very interesting story about Ballycarberry Castle. At one stage it was held by two McCarthy brothers. One of them held the ground floor and the other held the upper floor. Um, and when they were being visited by their overlord, uh, they obviously had to entertain him. But the guy on the upper floor was at a bit of a disadvantage because the guy on the lower floor um, cut off access, so he, he blocked the stairs. Um, so. The, his brother on the upper floor wouldn't be able to produce a feast and therefore impress his chieftain. But the upper, the guy on the upper floor had a better idea. He cooked the meat in beautiful wines instead of in water. So he actually produced a richer, uh, more impressive feast. He's the one who, who got the praise of his overlord. Hey guys, my name is Liam O'Neill. Hi, and I'm Abdul Manfouk. We're two students from Arizona State University, all the way from Phoenix, Arizona. And today we hiked Canuck na Dubber, and this cross right here marks the very top. 13, actually the 12th cross of the 12 crosses, starting from the very beginning. And uh, Abdul, as of right now, we're in the middle of a cloud. As you can see, we're wearing jackets, but... It is very cold, I will admit. Very refreshing, very refreshing. A good, brisk 56 degrees in the, the middle of the cloud. The fresh Irish air filling our lungs, and oh, I couldn't tell you anything. And the hike, the hike was glorious. A good one hour and a half incline. Uh, very, very riveting and uh, breathtaking sights on the way up here. We couldn't, we could not find anything like this in Arizona. So we are very appreciative that we traveled all this way, 5,500 and something miles to have a little taste of this fresh Irish air. And from this peak, you can see the Atlantic on your right and the Irish farmland on your left. Fantastic sight, truly amazing, truly amazing. I'd come back. If I came back, I could do this another time. Would you say, Abdul? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> We're standing here on at Mountain Stage, uh, which was part of the Great Southern and Western uh, Railway Line, which ran from Farn Four all the way into Valencia Island to Valencia Harbour, uh, down at Bernard. Um, it opened in 1893, uh, 1st of September 1893. Uh, it provided a huge amount of economy or wealth to the area, uh, with people involved with salting and fish. Um, and also carrying transport and goods into the area as well too, which made the area very, very vibrant and uh, a busy little area. Um, since its closure in 1960, in the uh, beginning of February 1960, uh, the line has gone into disrepair. Um, there is very little areas of it. Some parts of the bridges have been up, uh, up collapsed and fallen, and uh, it's now getting ready to see a rejuvenation of the old line, which will be turned into. Um, into a walkway, uh, a greenway and a walkway, uh, which is uh, very exciting for the whole area here again. <coughs> so it's effectively the, the greenway again, or the, the railway line, um, reju rejuvenating an area that it once rejuvenated or gave a lot of wealth into. Uh, it will be, the, the, the proposed greenway is going to run from Glen Bay all the way into Carsevine and possibly down to Renard afterwards, which will be a 28 kilometre run. Um, 
providing an access for cyclists and walkers uh, into South Kerry. So in 2014, Kerry County Council secured national cycle network funding from the Department of Transport, Tourism and Sport. Uh, to develop the Greenway uh, along the former railway line from Glen Bay via Carcevine and on to Renard. So it was back in 2014 really that we secured the funding for the project and since then we have been involved in uh, the process of um, I suppose outlining the route option stages so various route options were uh, put on the table We've assessed those route options. Um, from the route options, they were assessed under environmental, engineering and economic criteria. A final preferred emerging route emerged from these assessments and that's what's on public display today. we have uh, the O'Connell Memorial Church. It's the only church uh, dedicated to a layman that is Daniel O'Connell and it is a fabulous structure built of Nuri granite and uh, was completed and opened in 1902. is the only church in Ireland that's named after somebody who isn't a saint um, or who hasn't been beatified and that of course is the great Daniel O'Connell uh, the politician uh, who is from this area born just out the road in Carisavine and his family home of course is in Derry Nan uh, which is also near here um, and it was um, a, a lot when it was being built a lot of money poured in um, and of course the O'Connell family supported it as well so that's why the, the, the church is so big and it is the Daniel O'Connell Church. The next year was the 67 Fenian Uprising. This was a plan to take the country back, use the cable to tell the world that Ireland was free and then destroy the cable. However, the British found out about it and it was cancelled. But for some reason nobody told the people of Carcevine that it was cancelled. And they rose up in the city, caused a lot of chaos, fought with the British forces and then marched to Killarney where they thought they were going to meet hundreds more people to go to Dublin. But there was nobody there, so they all went home. But the British saw the damage that they could did cause in the town and they could have caused the station so they had to build something to deter the local people and the result was the old barracks. It was built between 1870 and 1875 but apparently it was built in such a rush that the plans got mixed up in London and this building was supposed to be built in India and the one that's in India should have been built over here. It was built so big because it was attacked quite frequently by the local people we have two towers, one at the front and one at the back, so that they can defend all four sides. It stayed as a police station until 1922, and that's when the Civil War broke out. This town being Republican, it was attacked by the Free State Army. In the battle, the word got out to the locals that the Free State Army were winning. The local women didn't really want the Free State Army to get control of this building. So one night in August 1922, they came and burnt it down and it stayed but at a burnt out shell for 69 years. In 1991, a group called ACARD was formed and over the course of five years, they actually rebuilt this building using the original plans which we got from the National Archives and they built it around the structure that was here and this is what we have today.
pre-Reformation times, the Abbey of the Holy Cross existed in Carcerine Town. It was uh, the, built by Augustinian friars and uh, existed until the, the Reformation. When, uh, the, uh, ref with the Reformation, church property and so forth was confiscated by the English government. Now, in about 1810, they built the, another, the Abbey, within in close proximity to uh, the old church. And this existed until about 1860, when due to the growth of, of the population, uh, they moved to the main street and in a building uh, on West Main Street belonged to the uh, Church of Ireland. And this property uh, was bought and built, the church was built there and accommodated uh, about 200, 200 people. It um, existed right up until the uh, 19, about 1970 is when it closed down. This is due in particular to the number of Protestants declined in the area here. Very few existed and uh, as time went on it wasn't economic to keep it going. During that time as well they had their own school and the school existed in what we call Bridge Street and that lasted up to about 1930 and then that also closed down. So the church is closed down and it was bought by a private here and is being used as a tourist centre, as a, uh, a restaurant and so forth in the building. This is a, a unique building, as you can see. It's a, a converted church. Um, we're right in the centre of town. People should stop here because it's uh, really attractive with nice gardens out the front. Um, we have excellent pizza, excellent wine. Um, we have wines from all over the world. Um, and it's such a relaxed environment. We have couches to sit on and relax. You don't have to eat pizza if you don't want. You can just come in and have a glass of wine. Um, we have uh, kids options as well as uh, everything for adults, cheese boards, uh, we have tortilla uh, bowls with uh, spices and sour cream and cheeses, um, but an extensive range of pizzas. Um, yeah, it's such a unique building that uh, even to come here and just look at it is uh, a reason to come on its own.